Hi guys, how are you? It's Arty here again. So yeah, if you're seeing the video, it's probably because you checked the email. Uh, so just to explain, uh, I read the feedback forms and I realized that for some of you it was very, very useful. But for some of you it was also very, very basic. And one of the conclusions I got was that, yeah, it's normal. People have different understandings about Excel. So I decided to try something different. So what I want to try, uh, whatever content I want to give you, uh, I, I can give you via video because then if you already know that you can just jump right and you don't need to keep listening something you already know but uh, and then we book again uh, doesn't need to be this week it can be next week uh, but we book again an actual workshop where we go there to actually work um, and then we can do it on hangouts we can share the screens we can uh, make this content a bit more practical to your day by day. Um, so that's my first idea. Uh, let's see if you guys enjoyed the video. You can tell me. Uh, well, I also send on the email about the WhatsApp groups. So I'm gonna ask there in the WhatsApp group. So if you prefer the the, the first first way I've done with a YouTube live and things like that, you can comment there. But also if you like this this format, uh, you can also comment there so that I can know how do I do do the rest. So my intention is that this video is very very quick and I'm gonna explain just once I'm not gonna try myself to explain many times because you can go back and, and see again if you don't understand the first time uh, So we're gonna have uh, I'm already putting the advanced content But I split into two parts or maybe three because otherwise the video is gonna get too long um, But yeah for this first part, we're gonna go through dragging locking data validation, uh, count ifs and dates, and also different ways to calculate average. Uh, so first about dragging, this was something I wanted to explain the last time, but we didn't have enough time. What is dragging? Uh, dragging, uh, here there are some instructions. Uh, you can check the link for this spreadsheet on the description of the video, and probably also on the email. Uh, but basically is when you do this slide. You, you select a cell and then you click on this square and then you drag it. So why <laughs> why do we need to do that? So first is to help you not have to write the same thing many, many times. Um, and also to help you in, implement like multiple formula, uh, one formula in like a very big time. And basically to save you some time. So I'm going to show you a few examples. For example, if you want to count until 100, <laughs> uh, but you don't want to type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, you can just do this. Uh, you can select, uh, you can type like 1, 2, 3, or just 1, 2, and then you can start dragging. And as you can see, it goes uh, how, how long do you want. You can count until 100 if you want. Uh, but something to keep in mind, for example, if you just have 1 here, uh, and you drag it, it's gonna be just one, 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 which can also be useful. So even if you have a text, what text B? Uh, yeah, as you can see, you can repeat many times. It's not necessarily copy and pasting, but it, but it's pretty much the same. But yeah, that's a very useful tip uh, for some basic stuff. Let me keep the one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. See, uh, this works with some other things in Excel as well. For example, this you have January, February, and yeah, there you go, January, February. Oh. So yeah, you can drag it even months. And these are just examples when the cell just have some certain value on it. But now, how does it work with formulas? So for example, if I put a formula here, I want this. Uh, this column to be equal to the to the uh, v column to be equal to the u column so i'm just gonna do this so i want this cell the v8 to be equal u8 so the most simple formula you can get and here's what happens when i drag it down so as you can see it also copies exactly like that right so yeah uh so this means even though th this this is the difference a little bit about copy and pasting or just simply copying because uh, the even though you're dragging the the values are actually changing so here it was you uh, you can see here on the corner u8 u9 u10 u11 so that can be very useful in specific situations and especially combining with this another thing the about locking oh, this was supposed to be two 
Yeah, so what is locking? So basically locking is when uh, you put this money, this dollar symbol inside your formulas. Uh, and basically because your formulas is going to have like the formula and it's always going to have some kind of cell, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I will show examples later, but it's always going to be some the, the identification of some kind of cell, for example, B6 or A1 or F12. Uh, and then when you put the money symbol here before the B or, for example, before the 6, um, that's going to make that in case you drag this cell or this formula to another direction, the formula is still going to stay the same. Uh, why is this important? I'm going to show examples, so it's okay if you didn't understand yet. Uh, so, uh, why is this important? Because sometimes we want to, like, we want to put the same formula in a, in a entire column, but we don't want certain thing to change, like it was changing before, like the A, B, C, D. So that was changing, but maybe we don't want that. So let's go to the examples. So that's the same example, the last example I was showing with the formula. So let's let's pretend it's the same. Like uh, the column Q, I want to become exactly like the column P. So if I don't lock, this is what's gonna happen. Exactly what I just showed you. But let's say I want to lock, uh, and let's say I want to lock the line 11. So I want everything here in the column Q to be exactly like the line 11 so i'm gonna put some money here <laughs> the, the dollar the, this s here this s with the money thingy um and there you go now uh, even if i drag down so because the 11 represents the lines so i put the money in front of the lines uh, i could have put it here as well and i can even put in both but for this case, I just want to put in the lines. And then, yeah, and then it stays. So it doesn't change. Everything is going to show 11. Uh, then another example. Now thinking in both lines and columns. So I have these three columns. One is fruits, colors, and animals. Um, so let's say this is a table, right? So let's even paint it in a different color. So this is uh, blue. Oh, this blue is too dark. This kind of blue. And I want exactly the same down here, but in the red. So let's put it like this, banana. Okay, we have the banana because we just put it there. We I didn't lock anything yet. And of course, if I do this, it's going to show apple, pineapple. If I do this, it's going to show also the colors and the animals. Let's say, uh, let me, control Z, control Z. Let me see... Uh, I just want fruits here. Um, so I'm gonna lock the column, right? Because it's the fruits column. So I'm gonna put an S in front of the column S. Well, that gets a bit confusing, but there are two different S, can you see? Uh, but I'm not gonna lock the lines. So let's say, so when I move down, since I didn't lock the lines, it still moves, right? So it's 11, now it's 12, 13. Uh, but, all, but if I move, to the horizontal it stays because that that is changing the column and i told them no i want the column to be locked so uh just opposite example so uh, yeah let's say i i want one banana I, I want one fruit one color and one one animal so let me lock the line because i just need one of each so I'm going to put this S in front of the, the number that represents the line. Then I can drag because I'm going to get one of each. But even if I move down, it's going to be the same because the line is locked. So this lo the, all the lines that I drag, it's always going to take this line because I locked it. And yeah, the final example, you can actually lock both. So I want to lock the column and the line. So I just want bananas now. Give me bananas. So that's it. You can drag and there you, you have a lot of bananas. So this is about locking. Uh, now going to the next topic. This is something people asked. And I, I was going to present in the last class. But since it's something so simple, I decided to do it now. Because it's going to take me 30 seconds, you will see. So data validation, what is that? That's a function from Excel. 
um, basically you can select a certain num uh, like a column or a line you can select whatever you want and you're gonna right click uh, and you're gonna go down is always the last option and you're gonna see something here data validation and here what does it mean you you are kind of changing the type of cells that they are so probably it's gonna be on this list from a range uh, which is I don't know what does it exactly does it mean but for example if I want to create a list uh, of names, so I'm gonna put member A, member B, member C. Uh, in what's important to look here, I'm I'm separating with the commas, so I'm putting a comma here to split what is who, the first member, second member, third member. So you have always have to put a comma. The space here doesn't matter. I just put it because of habit. Then I click save, and then this is what happens. See, now I only have three options. So this is very helpful. For example, if you uh, if you are using the the formulas of count uh, if, because that makes like even the, the name of the members like you don't get the risk of of people writing down their like like my name is R T but then I write R two somewhere else then I write Kevin somewhere else. So these these three words they're different. They're three different values on Excel, but I know that they, they all represent me. But of course, the formula cannot know that. But this way, you can standardize it, and it's gonna be much easier for you to create your formulas. Then also about checkboxes. So a lot of people ask me, uh, how do I make a checkbox? That's the most simple thing in the world. You're just gonna come here to the data validation again, uh, and you're gonna click checkbox. <laughs> so simple. Uh, but then, how do you actually use this in your formulas? Uh, as you can see, th this is a square with a checkbox, but when you see the, the text, it shows true or false. So, for example, if you want to use the count if, uh, let me make a quick example here. Count if, here, all these things. If you want to count which boxes are checked, you just write here, true. Done. I know there is four, five, six, seven. Eight. Or you can write false as well. False. Yeah, that's false, false, false. So that's how you use combine it with the formulas. And just the final thing that we're gonna use in the next tab, uh, but it's also about dates. So also same thing, right click data validation, and you can put a date here. Uh, I never change this. I just put it this like this. Uh, but the cool thing is that now when you double click, it's going to show a small calendar and it's going to be very easy to put the dates. So why this is important, uh, I'm going to explain here. So now uh, after I explain data validation, uh, I want to explain about a few formulas and I'm going to use kind of a real example. Not a real example, but something that for sure I know a lot of you use this uh, most likely on a daily basis. So let's say here I have the name of the members and then as I explained before, I don't want it to be random. I want the name of the members to be standardized so that later I can use formulas to count their tests. So first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to put some data validation, list of items, A, B, C, D. Yeah, I have four members only. Done. So here, as you can see, if somebody tries to put something else at like F, uh, it, you, it, they, the, the cell is still going to count the value, but it's going to show some warning. And then maybe that's going to help for people to fill in things correctly. But yeah, the cell still counts. So the cell still exists with the wrong one. Then let's say like this is the my members. This is all the tasks I delegated to them. So let's make the same here. Uh, what, what, why, why is it important for us to put uh, data validation for dates? Because some members, maybe they'll write the dates like this. Like 2nd of April. Others will write like this. Mm. You know, like these are very different ways to write dates. Uh, but if we standardize it, we can actually create formulas with it. Uh, so yeah, I think I already added this here. So I'm just gonna come here, remove validation, so that I can make the example for you. So this is normal cells. I didn't put any validation here. Now let's say I want to put dates. So yeah, dates done. Okay, now these are dates. I'm gonna put here a lot of dates. I, I can even I can even drag this actually. 
So see, I dragged for starting from 28th of April, 29th, 31st of May, 2nd of May, 3rd of May. So dragging is very helpful. Um, so yeah, now I have very standardized dates. Yes, sometimes it's a problem because these dates are wrong. I like are not wrong, but they're weird because these are the uh, American way to write it. Like you put the year first, then the month second, then the the day late uh, in the end. But let's say in case this become a very big problem, uh, I want to teach you some very cool and simple formulas. So let's say you have a date, uh, and let's say the date is in the proper format. And you want to know, and you and, and you just create another column like month and day, and then you can put a very simple formula which is equal month. <laughs> wow, so complex. Done. Then that's gonna show the month. Oh, ignore that. So yeah, that shows that it's May. Uh, let's say equal day. Remember, all is about the brackets. Yeah, so, oh, sorry. Yes, so you have the days as well. So let's say maybe that's gonna be easier to uh, visualize. And let's say this is still not easy to visualize. So then, um, no, that's not over complicated. But yeah, I don't want these things now. I'm just showing you like how you can use the equal month, equal day. And there is also something super cool so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna group these columns and I'm gonna hide it. So I teach you how to do this in the first master class. So if you don't remember, just go back there. But that's that's just because I don't want to look at it now. But of course, if you guys want to check after later in the output, uh, it will be still be here. I didn't delete it. But there's another formula super easy, equal to day. So that show the days of today, and whenever the day changes, the the, the number also changes there. Uh, and why is it important? Because uh, what if I want to have a column like this? How many days I have to deliver this task? So I can put equal and I can select the day of the deadline minus the day of today. Do you see what happened? I, I, I did two dates. There are two dates which they are properly formatted. I just did minus and there you go. But yeah, if I do this, what's going to be the problem? Yeah, a lot of problems as you can see. Right. So what is the problem? I forgot to lock. So as you can see, whenever I drag down, I still want these values to go to also move down together. But I don't want the date of today to move because I want it to stay there because there is only one day today, right? So yeah, day today is in B2, so I'm gonna lock. Um, I I should only lock the line because I'm not gonna move columns. But sometimes I just lock both just in case. Um. Like, of course, nothing can happen, but at least I remember that I really don't want to move that, that, that number, that, that cell from there. And there you go. So then you have like a counting day that updates automatically because this formula always is going to change according to the day. And it's always going to be telling your members how many days left they have to deliver the task. Uh, and then again, let's use data validation again because I want something like this. I want a list of items and I want a done not done in progress because I'm not a person of percentages I'm a person of like is it done or is it not done? and in between you can say it's in progress but if you put that I'm gonna understand you're gonna finish in the next hours <laughs> uh, so yeah so then let's say the members can update here let's say everybody did some people didn't did didn't 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 yeah I'm just putting this randomly. Let's put some in progress as well. Yeah, I just put this randomly, and as you can see, this thing is very random. So if I'm trying to see, like, if I am member A, it's very difficult for me to actually see how many tasks left I have. Of course, this this kind of table is good for me to remember each of the tasks, but that's why I created the second part here. Imagine that I want to know how many tasks I have in total. So that's how we're gonna use the count ifs. Uh, this this one were the examples I'm gonna delete because I'm gonna do it again uh, but first I guess this one uh, I already teach you last time which is the just the count if because as you can see there's two, there's a difference is count if or count ifs <laughs> so uh, first just to know the total tasks so I just want to know like how many tasks I have in total so I'm just gonna count count if 
and I want to know. I, I don't need to measure necessarily on the task. Maybe I can measure here on the tasks to be better, but it, it doesn't really matter. Oh, actually it matters. <laughs> so let me just count here the, the name of the members because I know that if there is no task, nobody's gonna put their name here. But every time someone puts a task, they are also gonna put their name here. So I want to know within this range, how many of them are A. So yeah, I just put between these things that I still don't know the name, parses, I don't know. Done, so I, I know how many tasks A have. Uh, let's say you have a lot of members and you are lazy because we are procrastinators. So you can lock here as well. So for example, I want to lock the lines. And yeah, let's just leave it like that. So then I can lock the lines. I can drag it down. Let, let, uh, yeah, because if I didn't lock the lines, the whole thing was going to move down together. But I don't want that because the range is the same. Uh, of course, I still need to change that. So procrastinator's life is not always easy. So sometimes you have to edit manually like this. So, okay, so I know the total tasks of each member. And this is true, you can count here, you can pause the video and count. Uh, but then let's say like I just want to count the tasks of each member which are done. So that's how you're gonna use count if, ifs. So basically here, uh, the count if allow you to put one condition. But let's say I want to put more than one. So the first thing, the first condition, this is the member A. So I want that within this range, they only count the A. So I put the first condition and I split it with a comma. So this is the first that we can call argument. This is the second argument. But this, since this is a count if formula, I can add more. So I'm going to add, add another comma and I'm going to select another part and I want to count from this G column, which one are, uh, I put a comma, which one are this text done. Yep. So this one is going to count exactly like how many are both A and done. So there is some A here, which is not done. Where is it? Yeah, here, this, this last A is in progress. That's why it showed three. But in total task, it showed four. Um, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to lock the lines here because I just want to drag it down. And this is going to make my life much easier. Uh, so I locked. So now I, I can drag down very relaxed. But also, um, I will I will have to change this, right? So this is B. This is the C. And this is the D. Oh my god, the member D didn't do anything. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Look, not done, not done, not done. Wow. And then let's say you want to come up with a percentage in the end. So then it's very easy. You can just divide this by this. Is it correct? Yes, uh, I don't need to lock anything, I can just drag, drag it down here. And yeah, probably I'm gonna give, speak, talk to you more about it, uh, about how to format the things more in the last class. Uh, but I can give you some, some basic things here. For example, whenever you put a, uh, you want to come up with a percentage, but it comes with some weird numbers like that. Um, you can just come here to format and select, I want it to be a percentage. There you go, you have a percentage. And yeah, the, uh, the things are gonna update automatically. So like if I, if suddenly no one did anything, if suddenly everybody did everything, everybody's done, 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 done. Then let's say everybody didn't do anything. It's not done, not done, not done. So as you can see, it changes automatically. It's very easy to do. Um, and the final part uh, is just about average. So this I'm just gonna show another very simple example. Let, let me put some space in here. Uh, yes. So let's say, I don't know, you're running some kind of social media campaign and then you're tracking how many likes do you have. Let's say you made three posts, one had likes. I'm putting random numbers here. This one had uh, eight. This one had 17. This one had 25. This one had 
nine shares. This one had two shares. This one had one share. So, um, let's say you're doing that, and then amazing, you're making posts. Does that mean your strategy is working or not? I don't know. How can you know? Data analysis. And how can you do data analysis? Let's say first you want to know what the average likes each of your posts have. So you can make a simple average. So average equal average average. And then yes, you can just select this. Done. That's the most simple way to make average. Um, you can do the same thing with the commas. Average. Same thing with the comments and the same thing with the likes done so as you can see i don't need to select each one of the cells i can just put two dots and put from where to where uh, so yeah i have this this is the kind of thing you can look and you can say okay let's set a goal so after you did the first three posts if you want to make new posts you can see okay so if this was the average let's make sure that the next posts they are at least this they are more than this more more than the average so this is very good to set goals especially when we're doing tasks which are not related to exchange because for exchange goals it's very easy you just need to look at the kpis of approval app applicant and so on but let's say this is not enough so you are still bothered that one post had very few likes but had a lot of comments and one post had a lot of everything so what happened and actually what does it matter the most so let's say you want to create a score called relevance and relevance is something subjective like if something is relevant to me not necessarily is going to be relevant to you but you guys as a team can agree with some definition of relevant and let's say this is the definition of relevant definition of relevant the definition of relevant is that like the likes they are cool, but they only are like 25% important. The comments, though, the comments are good because, like, they are where people tag each other, so it's good because it spreads even more. And the shares, they are cool, but at the same time, I also understand that not everybody's gonna share, so I cannot put so much for that. So here I have 65 in total, so I want 35 less. So as you can see in total here, if I make like this plus this plus this, it's gonna be 100%. So that's important, right? That's always sums 100% whenever you're dividing by weights. But then how do you calculate the average then? Or how can you calculate this relevance score? Like, because if you just make the average between likes and comments, it's, it's not going to be the same because one like doesn't represent the same thing as the comments. And that's how we call like the weighted average. So you put a weight on the average and <laughs> simply like in case you don't know, but the average formula is like, like not the average formula, like the way to calculate average, you take the total and you divide. No. You, yeah. And you divide by how many. So, for example, total likes and divide per how many posts yeah so that's how you make the average um, but that is another way that you can do as well uh, so for example I want to calculate the relevance for the post one so what I'm gonna do uh, how do you calculate the total of likes you sum oh, wait so that's a sum right so you sum like 50 plus 13 plus 80 so that's what it's gonna happen but i'm gonna sum these three things here likes comments and shares but i'm gonna use a lot of brackets here so pay attention so the first bracket i will take the likes and i will multiply by 25 percent i'm gonna close the brackets plus uh, i'm gonna take the comments oh i forgot to open the brackets so open brackets comments multiply by the percentage for comments close brackets plus open brackets shares multiplied by the percentage of weight for the, the shares great so what is important now this i'm just summing and multiplying for the relevance but this is not the average yet right 
So the average I need to divide by the the number. No, yeah. No, actually not. I don't need to divide anything because I'm using percentages here. So the percentage is always like divided by 100. That's why there is a, a, a dash and two zeros because that's always like divided by 100. So yeah, I guess this is going to be enough. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, please comment and let's text me in the group because I'm, I don't know, I just cannot remember exactly now because <laughs> I use this formula so much that um, maybe I need to divide by three, but I'm not sure. No, I don't think so because as I told, I'm using the percentages, so there's really no need to divide by anything here. But I forgot to do something. Uh, this, as you can see, like, so I'm lazy. I don't want to type everything all the time. So, as you can see, I'm following the basic principle, fundamental that I spoke last time. So, I'm keeping the columns logic. So, the same column means the same, the, the same line means the same thing. The same column means the same thing. One column is one post. Each line is comment, share, or like. So, I, I, I could just drag this. But why is it zero? Is it zero? Because <laughs> here there is nothing. And here there is nothing. So I need to lock, right? So I'm going to come back here. And all these, this C10, I'm going to lock it. And I just need to lock the column. Yeah, I don't need to lock the line. So let me just lock the column here. Lock the column here. And lock the column here. And done. Yes, done. So now, let's say, I, what does this number represent? I don't know. It doesn't have a name. Actually, have a name. You gave a name. Relevance. So if 16 is good or not, that's going to depend on whatever criteria you decided here. And then you can decide your own criteria. But what is cool about that is that you can compare. And that you can see that sometimes uh, if there is a post with like 40 comments, this post with 40 comments is going to be more relevant than the one with 50 likes. Because that's the criteria you put it here. And that's a cool way that you can analyze the impact of your work. And not just post it and think the task is done. <sighs> so that's it that I wanted to say. Um, tell me if you enjoyed. Don't forget to join the WhatsApp group. Uh, and yes, um, I will... Yeah, I, I think that's it for the video. Maybe it got too long a little bit. But... Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Just let me know your feedback. And that's it. Thank you so much.